Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. This is our monthly tech meet, and we're going to be working on Silver Shadow height control components. What was this one doing, Ronnie, to be the owner of the idea you had a problem? Uh, this is just one that I had on a shelf off of a parts car, so I'm just, I was looking for a topic this week and I talked to Paul, a good friend of mine, and he says, he reminded me, we haven't done one of these before, so. What does it that. normally do? Is it just hunt for, does the car just hunt for the height when they're leaking? Or? The leaking is just a leak. Oh. Uh, the operation has different things that can cause different situations, but this, it's usually they just leak. But when you put them back on, you got to set them right. Uh, so, here we go. There are more parts in here, just so you know. You got that one. You got that piston. You got that one. You got this one. This is an early one. You got that one. And I think then you've got this housing. Now on this side, you've got this big spring. We got more things to take apart. As you can see in here, if you want to look at these O rings here, they're supposed to stick up above the surface of this because there's a groove in there. But this thing is super flat, so it's just old. And it was probably going to start leaking if it were on a car fairly soon. So, this right here is the operating shaft. And if you look in there, you can see that moves that piston back and forth. And one thing that's very one potential uh, mistake you can make is if you're putting it on the car, if you move this shaft too much, this thing becomes disconnected. So it no longer will operate. And this is held in with a spring, so if you move the shaft too much, it's going to pop out. And you don't want to do it after you put it all together on the car, because then you've got to take it all back apart to do it. There's that. Uh, we got uh, this one right here. We're almost, almost out here. Now this is the other uh, end piece. And now we've got the, uh, there's a little bell crank in there if you guys want to look. Let me see if I can operate it. The thing that moves that piston, you can see it. It's a bell crank in there. See it going up and down in there? So it's designed to come down and hook into this groove right here, and then move this back and forth. And that's what moves valves to direct the, the, the flow to the rams or away from them. So now we've got to pull this piece out. And this has um, a couple snap rings in it. Does this uh, hydraulic system too, does that also operate the brakes? <coughs> this does not operate the brakes, but it's part of the, one of the braking systems. So it takes pressure from one of the braking systems. Like I said, the fluid is looking very clean. It's leaking out of this. Well, that, that's a good thing. Yeah, that's... Now, if the leaks, are they normally just like a week or, you know, 1,800 PSI system? Right? Well, they don't usually have a catastrophic failure. What happens is your first sign is when you pull a car in after driving it, and park it, you come out the next day and there's some brake fluid leaking back by the rear wheel. There's a lot of potential sources, but it's right in front of the rear wheel by the trailing arms. That's what I did on mine. Come out with a puddle. Yeah, mm -hmm. it'll do puddles, it'll do drips. Uh, so you have these washers which are shouldered on here on each side that are under the snap rings. And then you've got the bell crank in here. There's the bell crank. That's the piece that goes, moves this back and forth. And of course you've got these fancy little O-rings in here. So the shoulder walker, so does the shoulder go away from the snap ring? Yes, it? it goes towards this rubber seal because it's designed to fit in a groove to compress it. Okay, and that's your housing there. So now it's all apart. We have O-rings to take off? Yes, sir. You said this was old? Yes. What does that mean? Original? Uh, well, it's an early valve is what it means. 
Um, they've changed the design of this disc on later valves, so I don't know when it happened, but this is an early valve. Uh, and then they also, if you look in here, you see these bushings that this thing ride on? They're made out of brass on this one. The new ones are made out of like uh, nylon. And I think it was for noise, because you got to remember that this moves up and down with the wheel, and you can hear it in hydraulics. That's the hardest thing to get rid of on one of these is a hydraulic noise with that, the height control. They make popping and cracking and hurts and just all kinds of weird noises. And a lot of these, you have to just take everything apart, clean it out, flush the lines, make sure you get all the dirt out. This system also has a, a few of the rubber flexible hoses. So when they start to deteriorate and send rubber into the system, it can, it can be fun to try to get rid of it. Those, uh, I don't know if that material is non-metallic, the uh, disc and on those two pistons, are those included in the kit? Or those no, the kit is just overings. Now they make updated bushings for these, which I don't even know if you can buy them anymore. And then this disc, this disc, um, they changed the design. If you look at the end, you can see an imprint on there. And this is the working spot right here. When that, this thing, go, is applied up and down, it pushes against this, uh, it pushes against the valve, which then displaces this disc, which allows fluid through it, another passage. Mm -hmm. Okay, and... Uh, and those don't incur anywhere? Uh, I, you know, I've, I've fairly rarely had to replace any parts that were worn. I've had pistons sticking, I've had these break before, because it's pretty, pretty narrow in there only because of a misalignment problem. Um, I did have one of these valves blow up. Uh, years ago I had a mechanic do an accumulator, which is the pressure control, and he put it together wrong and it just kept building pressure, so it actually broke the ears off of one of these housings. It just kept building pressure and popped it. Luckily it broke that instead of blowing up the engine or something because the accumulators are mounted to the side of the engine. And Funny, I'm fascinated by the sound, the hydraulic sound. Uh, is that something? Do I have to repeat them? Yeah, this is the no, please. Uh, no. <laughs> do the conquerors judges address that? Uh, okay, Concours. that's a great topic. It depends on the Concorde. Now, in the Rolls-Royce Club and the National Meet, when you get to a senior award, which means you've won first in your class previously, uh, then they do a test. It's the driving test. So they have another thing they have to do, and they get three judges in the car, and they, you drive them around. And if they hear that, they're going to mark off for it, obviously. So that's the only time a judge would ever know. Normally, Concours. They just look at it and say, yeah, it's pretty, and this screw's not right, and whatever. Uh, but at a national level, they do crawl under the car, though, too. And they look at your, there's a whole checklist for each model series for the undercarriage. But the, the only time you're going to hear that function problem is when it's being driven. It's not a silly question. It's a great question. For that person that wants to get 100 points on and win the biggest award. All right, so right now... What I'm going to do is, I'll do this off of camera, but I'm going to clean up all the parts and get them all ready to put back together. Okay? So we can take a quick break.